This is how you come down. So here is the meat from those two deer that I uh, harvested last month. Show you, uh, told you guys to show you some of the meat, and I cut up most of the the choice easy cuts myself. It saves money. It's not hard to do. This tape is brutal. <clears throat> you know what do we got? We got. We got to try to find home for it in the freezer here. So, that's what it looks like. That's what you get. A whole bunch of those. This is custom ground venison. I got a lot of burger made because I didn't get much burger made of the elk. And, uh... Are you kidding me? Come on. Thanks. So this is Chipotle flavored sausage. There'll be six in there to a package, I think. Chipotle. 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 Good stuff. This is the leftover sausage. They throw in a box of sweet Italian sausage meat. Very delicious. Sweet Italian. What else we got here? We got a whole bunch more. Uh, what's this one? Cranberry sausage. Tried that the other night. Holy <laughs> crap, that was good. Cranberry, chipotle, cranberry. So there you go. Oh, and then I had them save the bones. So I have uh, various bags of chopped pre-cut bones. A little bit of meat left on them for the uh, for the dogs. There you go. So now, um, what do I feed? Do I share that meat? I, I feed so many people a year, it's stupid. There you go. Do I need to make videos of it and put it on YouTube for praise? No. Uh, but I assure you, I feed a lot of people every year. So there you go. Now, let's get back up to the man cave stage and see what's up in the, in the email world. So it's uh, Christmas Eve day. We had a Christmas uh, morning before yesterday. And then all hell broke loose with the weather. And I ended up having to take all the kids to the BC Ferries in my pickup truck because they just couldn't drive. It was too brutal. And now they are currently sitting in the airport with cancellations nonstop near Vancouver, waiting forever, trying to get to Edmonton. Anyway, so now what has it done? So that it froze? No, it poured ice rain. 
yesterday on the way home. Poured ice rain, came home to a major crust on top of the snow, and then uh, it decided to pour rain all night. So it's absolute freaking hell out in the yard. It's brutal. Nobody wants to come out of the barn. Goats don't want to come out of the house. Nobody wants to do much. But the good news is I've got uh, Rob and Chucky dinner tomorrow night and the, my First Nation superhero ladies are coming over for Christmas dinner. How's that? Can't, I'm looking forward to that one. Now, I escaped the house. <laughs> I escaped. So now I get to have my little time out here. And uh, after I do this, I have to start doing some serious shuffling with the freezers because I honestly don't know where I'm going to stuff all that meat now. Holy shit. But I'll get it taken care of. Now, who do we got? What do we got? I don't know what that motor is in the background. It's either somebody on a jet boat or on the river or somebody playing with their hot rod in, the, in their yard. But anyway, background sounds don't to be too much don't seem to be too much of a problem with um, the GoPro. Anyway, sorry, getting on with it. This is titled "Some More Information You May Have Been Asking About from the Owl Man." The Owl Man, long time no here, my man. Where you been? Where you been? Here we go. Let's listen to what you got to say today. Looks like a long one. Steve, below is a revised and updated email of one I sent in August. So. Ignore one that was sent prior to this. Based on some of your recent videos, I know there are some people who will benefit from the added information. Beautiful. That's what we're after, dude. To answer some of your questions in regards to the Sabayan dogs, I can't just leave their relationship with dogs on the table without speaking of their relationship with other animals as a whole. After they are much more connected to the real... After all, they are much more connected to the real world than we are. Yeah, unfortunately for us. Before we dive into this, I thought I would address why your channel has grown and become popular. This may be a longer email than I usually send, so read at your own discretion. You're quite unique when it comes to people who narrate emails on this topic. You unknowingly have made all your viewers part of your story. You may not know this, but this is a rare quality of leadership. Someone with great leadership skills makes his audience part of his story. It connects the people to his life, his struggles and passions. It's not an ego thing. You naturally make your viewership part of your world. You invite people to participate, participate in your life. We all know Sarah, the goats, the cats, the poultry, and of course the horses. Not to mention your outdoor adventures and commentary. Just so you know, you're doing something like something that Julius Caesar, what? Alexander the Great and even Donald Trump have done. You're a humble man with great convictions and a good heart. People share your videos on various social media platforms and you instantly gather people who admire or hate you. <laughs> Which is typical of someone with the qualities of leadership. As you say, take it for what it's worth. Okay, man, thanks for the kind words and guaranteed you just triggered a bunch of haters to really hate much more now. <laughs> As I have forementioned, the majority of my information has come from several savvy individuals. They are direct answers to various questions that came up in conversations. On occasion, there has been the odd savvy individual who seemed inclined to divulge more information on a topic than usual. Some of the information I will share come from a few of those individuals. They do not all hate dogs. They are just like us with dogs in regards to their experiences with them. They typically do not like free-ranging dogs and chase and harass that, that chase and harass game animals. It really kind of pisses them off. If someone has dogs that leave their property and start harassing deer, they may take, they may make them just disappear. They really do not like to eat them. They actually identify with our relationship with them. It's not uncommon for them to raise orphan canines. It is easier for them to raise young predators because of the easy availability of meat. This is why some witnesses see them with the odd coyote, wolf, bear, or dog. As a whole, they will just leave the dogs alone unless they start to harass them. Some of them forge good relationship with dogs. The vast majority of them do not want to eat them. So I gave the, I gave the dog a... <laughs> I gave her one of those Christmas wrap cardboard rolls, and she's going ape shit on it over there. If you hear the background sound, that's what it is. My best friend witnessed a campground dog walk up, to, walk up to a juvenile sabe from behind, wagging his tail when he greeted him. The juvenile looked down and began to pet him. 
The Sabe was just a little over five feet tall. There's more to the story, but for the sake of brevity, it gets, to the, it gets the point across. I have a very close friend who I've known for over 20 years who has always had three to four labs who roamed her 60 acres. She occasionally discovered these beings on her property a few years ago when one spoke to her from the darkness that freaked her out. Apparently, the one who came to her place speaks the language of the Blackfoot Nation. The word was my walk. Unknown to me, this is Blackfoot for Madame. The only way I found this out is the Sabes told me what the word meant. Except the Sabes said it means my lady. Someone from the Blackfoot Nation confirmed the meaning of the word. I mentioned this story and this word, and he told me it was Blackfoot. Anyway, her dogs have never been harmed or terrified. She now suspects that the Sabes often feed them because there are times her dogs will not eat. She thinks they were being fed by something. Since I've known her, she has had five generations of labs from her original two. These dogs live outside all year long and never had any problems. I also know of a secondhand story of a man in Ohio who has a close relationship with a family in Sabe. I can't go into all the details and have no idea if it's true or not, but according to the story, the man was sitting around a small fire with this Sabe's family. It consisted of a large male, his mate, and young son. This man was cooking a rabbit the Sabes had gifted to him. When the Sabe wanted to meet with this man, they would typically see a dead rabbit at his doorstep. He would then go into the woods and prepare the rabbit over a fire, and the Sabe family would sit with him and eat it. Side note, the adult male found it humorous that the rabbit had to be cooked for the man to eat it. During one of these meals, there had been a stray dog running deer in this small woodland for quite some time. The man could clearly see the male Sabe was agitated with the dog, barking and running loose in the woods. So the male got up from the fire and disappeared. The dog was still barking and carrying on. And then you hear the dark dog start whining and crying in distress and then silence. A short time later, the adult male returned to the fire like nothing happened. Like I said, I cannot vouch for the validity, validity of the story, but it does seem to fit in with what the Sabbaths say about dogs. Killing dogs and making a spectacle of it has another meaning. The Sabbath have rules they generally adhere to. One is not to kill our animals, pets, or livestock. There are exceptions to this rule. Any animal we have that escapes is in, its enclosure is considered fair game. I don't know if it's, this is a rule they all have to abide by or just a clan rule. The one clan I know is well aware how tasty cattle and pigs are. They're always hoping they can get, they can get those. Part of that is about not trying to draw attention to themselves. The other part is they know the great creator does not approve of theft. That's a whole other discussion. The other exception is putting the animal out of its misery. They have said that they will remove an animal they sh that they think is an abusive in, a, in an abusive situation and save it from its suffering. If you recall in my last email, I mentioned a sabe that I referred to as Chester. He was hunting cats for food in a ditch line that ran along a small apartment complex behind a rural gas station. He was trying to, trying to determine if the cats had an owner or a home. He did not want to take someone's pet. So he was observing these cats to see if they wanted home or not. He also figured out that the feral cats were skinny, aggressive, and much more wary than someone's pet. Chester also has an affection for horses like we have. He really wants to ride one, but he had to be convinced his butt, he had to be convinced his size would hurt the one he was admiring from afar. They have the ability to calm animals down or strike fear into their hearts. They can calm horses to the point where they will braid their manes, just like as they will often feed a horse they have an affinity for. You know, on a side note for that one, I've had a shit pile of people send me pictures of manes and tails and say they were braided by a Sasquatch. For me, now, I always say take from what you will leave. Just for me, for the sake of discussion, um, I don't... I, I don't swallow the braiding part myself yet. I haven't seen I haven't seen the evidence that they braid a horse's mane, and uh, because the the patterns I've seen that people claim to be braided from a Sasquatch, <coughs> excuse me, are the exact same patterns in my horse's manes and tails as they get just from being messy, and me not brushing them out. I've seen it a million billion times. So uh, maybe that's just me. I mean, until I see an absolute perfect braided pattern like a human did or fingers did it, or even better, 
a horse standing there calm, having a, having a great time, while a 8, 9, 10, 14 foot hairy creature, man-like being, is standing next to it, braiding its mane. It's a tough one, it's just a tough one for me to accept, right? Um, my horses wouldn't let me stand right beside them without a halter to a, a hitching post to braid their manes up. They just would. They stand for a little bit and then they get bored and walk away. Anyway, that's just me babbling. But the hair and tail braiding of horses by Sasquatch is one that I find hard to believe myself. But, like I said before, who gives a shit what I believe, right? Goats. This may be a bit strange. I remember a conversation with one savvy about what they would do if one of their nursing women stops lactating. They will seek out another lactating female and she will function as something we used to call a wet nurse. Long before we invented bottle feeding, we did the same thing. I asked what you do if you can't find another nursing female. He said they will try to find a goat. They will try to sneak into a goat pen and let the baby nurse off a lactating goat. If that can't do, then they will attempt to steal the goat, but they will get in huge trouble if they do. So it's very risky to do that. He said, thankfully, they do not usually have to resort to that extreme. Dairy cattle are more easily accessible, but they learned over time that goat milk is more suitable for the infants. You know, there's going to be a shit pile of people who are just going to start shaking their head and saying, yeah, right. Right? That's a, that's a, that's a lot for anybody to wrap their noggin around that kind of detail, right? But take from what you will leave it. And now we have the part that those with selective hearing will focus on and forget anything I said prior. I have coined this Bigfoot, I have coined this Bigfoot Revenge Syndrome. Their rule set is they are not supposed to hurt or kill us. This is the number one law or rule they have to obey. If someone is stupid enough to shoot at one for a dumb reason, you may find yourself in this situation. They are not allowed to kill you, but they will kill every animal you have and make a big show of it. They will make sure you find it too. Hence, a dog torn in two and thrown at your door in the middle of the night. They will kill your livestock, especially the horses, because they know you have a bond with them. You may find yourself on the receiving end of their wrath if you play around with dogmen. I know someone who paid this price with his miniature, with his miniature donkeys. Here is the difficult part. They may do this if you have a really nasty clan. They may hate humans so much that they just resort to this behavior in an attempt to freak you out so you just pack up and leave. If they do this, the new people moving in will get the same treatment. If they resort to this behavior for no apparent reason, as I mentioned in previous videos, just talk them about it. I have found that approaching them in a respectful manner to resolve conflict works most of the time. It's not a good idea to grab the guns and actively go out to harm them. If you try to do something that is malevolent towards them, you will pay a price your whole life. They understand the difference between self-defense and malevolence. Try to keep a clear head if they are in this revenge mode. Tagging is real, and if they tag you as a dangerous human, the entire population will see it on you. You don't want to be tagged as a human asshole. They really are quicker. They really are quick to anger, have long memories, and can track you down no matter where you move to. I don't, re I don't recommend getting on their bad side. Now, there's always a chance you're dealing with a criminal element. Once again, it is best to address them about what is going on. They are generally aware of their own who are coming and going. If you address the problem, give them time to deal with it. They usually get on it as fast as possible for the safety of all the others. They actually do a good job of policing their own. I once mentioned what they call travelers. Often these individuals are on the run because they committed some type of high crime. I want to repeat this. Not all travelers are criminals, but this is a very simple way to show peaceful intent towards them. If the Sabe like you, they will give you gifts. Remember they have language, culture, and a belief system. Most of it is respect thing, and they will try to communicate these things through symbols that have meaning to them. Any dead wild animal left at your door like a rabbit, raccoon, deer is meant as a food gift. It is their way of being neighborly. The animal should not be torn to pieces. It's just dead. You know how someone will come over to a new neighbor and bring them a cake or something? It's like that. Feathers and dead birds left for you can be a bit more complicated because it seems different species and their feathers have different meanings. The only one I know well about is turkey feathers. 
The flight or tail feathers of a turkey is a token of friendship. Along the same thinking is white rocks or white quartz. That is a peace offering. I tell some people who are having a hard time dealing with them around their home is to place a wild turkey feather under a white stone or a rock on a stump or off the ground where they will find it. They will often leave something in return. No one needs to offer them food. Most will refuse to take it anyway. Stick to the rocks and feathers. Now, do not refuse a gift even if it's a dead animal. Just take it and say thank you. As crazy as it is, you don't want to offend them. I've said before that you don't have to be friends, but you have to be neighborly. Strive to be neighborly. Sometimes being neighborly means give and take of each other's behaviors as long as they are not, they are not out of hand. Look at it like this. If you have loud parties often and your neighbors don't complain, that's a win-win situation because they have roosters. We have to learn to live alongside each other and minimize conflict. Steve, you often mentioned they are good keepers of the forest. Uh-oh, we got all hell breaking loose here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Dog on goat. Okay, you guys play nice. I don't want to see any fur flying off the neck of the goat. Ruby. All right, Steve, you often mentioned that they are not good keepers of the forest. You misunderstood that. They will say they are guardians of many things. They will not tell you what those many things are. It's against the rules. They are keepers of the forest in the way and how they manage their prey animals. They do not hunt everything till there is nothing left. If the deer population is low, they will focus on something else. The savages have said the younger deer taste better. They prefer the younger animals opposed to those who are in their prime. They want the older ones to produce more fawns. They select individuals to eat or not eat. They select individuals to eat or not to eat. Sometimes they may have a favorite animal they will never kill to eat. This is one reason they may drive a hunter out of the forest. They also choose to physically hunt the animals versus mind fry them or pull one of their Jedi mind tricks on them. In their eyes, an animal has the right to fight for its life, so they choose to use their physical strength and cunning to catch them. They do not think it is fair to take an animal without giving it the chance to defend itself. This is why it's taboo for them to eat skunk. If one of them kills and eats skunk, they're supposed to spread its scent all over his own body because it was never fair to hunt. The guardians of many things refers to more than the forests. They can open and close portals, fixed or self-generated. If one of those portals is left open, it's dangerous. They also keep other things we are not fully aware of at bay. These other creatures people write in and talk about, they have names for all of them and stories to go with them. Keep that in mind. I know this is hard to swallow. Trust me, other times I wonder if anything they say is true, but you have, but you have people writing about all sorts of strange things they see. None of these things are strange to the Sabe. They are aware of it all. I hope all this information has been of help to others, including yourself. I suspect you are well known by the Sabe in all the eras you haunt. They seem to honor your requests. I don't think you'll have any problem with them and your livestock. You may want to ask them to keep the predators from your home. They will do that sort of thing, but don't go over the top if they start looking in the windows at night. It's scary, but they are just curious about how we live. They will know everyone in your household, and as you say, keep them aware. They understand a man protecting women and children. You know how, you, how to keep your head about you. Don't let the women in your household lose it if they see one. If my wife has learned to deal with it, any women can. I don't know if you'll ever get a mind speak incident from them. I think there's a genetic com component to that. It is actually a really interesting experience. It is not something to be afraid of. Because of their limited vocabulary and their frustration of trying to communicate with us, they will often project images, pictures, and emotions into our heads instead of words. The individuals with more interaction with us are better with words and simple phrases. I hope you experience it. It is something you never forget. Ask your First Nations superhero ladies about this and the other things that I've shared and see what they tell you. I think you will be surprised. I need to add this. They have a prophecy. It is called the Time of the Knowing. I've not really addressed this de in detail yet. They all know of it and it terrifies them. They have no idea when this is going to happen, but in my opinion it is close. I've not been able to get out and speak to them on this matter simply because my life has become a bit too busy and I don't usually bother them once winter sets in. 
It is something I think we as a people need to know about. I only say this because our so-called leaders have, have now shown their hand. And trying to keep secrets from the public is going to get increasingly more difficult. I know I come off as a very... I, I know I come off as very pro sabe. To me, they're just part of dealing with the world we live in. And as we people need to just live with that. We have to get past the fear and still go out and enjoy the outdoors. I want to encourage everyone who hears your voice. Don't stop doing what you love to do outdoors just because you know these beings are there. It is my desire you have some tools to work with. Fear is a mind killer. Thank you again for taking the time to share this with everyone. Blessings to you and all those who have had ears to hear. The Owl Man. Man, that was a big chunk, wasn't it? Sorry, I gotta go to my left trying to eat the grizzly bear stand and I'm keeping an eye on the dog. I think she's pouting because she took five or six straight jabs to the beak from the forehead of that crazy goat. I'm gonna kick her off. Anyway, thanks. Uh, since you first came out and started emailing us, man, with all of your experience, it's, it's a lot. You've got a lot of experience. You got a lot of uh, you got a lot of direct pieces of information that you deliver to the people. That there's, you you know as well as I, there's gonna be a whole bunch of people saying you're full of shit, right? It's just the way it is. I got I got hundreds of people saying I'm full of shit. I got tons of people saying that I make up every one of these emails, right? But anyway. Many of you can take from this what you will or what you will or just leave it. If the email read just now makes you angry, well go get yourself checked in and get a little counseling or something, all right? Instead of hitting caps lock and going crazy. Now I bet you there is going to be a shit pile of people who can relate to what the owl man just shared. Right? It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. And in a lot of what you said I can I can relate to. And it, a lot I should say a lot of what you said it is uh Triggers a few things in my mind and makes sense. But anyway, let everybody digest that one. Maybe even rewind it and listen to it again and, and see if there's anything in there of use to you or somebody you know. All right? And in the future, um, make sure you keep emailing us more information. All right, man? I've got a whole pile of questions I could, I could throw down if there was a way to get them answered through you. Maybe possibly, and uh, but just right now I'm a little too preoccupied with trying to get more emails out, and I've got these two freaking crazy animals wanting to war with each other beside my car right now, and it's distracting. So I'm gonna clean up this mess right here, and get back into it and get more voices heard. In just a minute. Okay, you pricks. All right, check out the size of this thing now. Look at this thing. This is a little ridiculous. Look at look at her. I don't have a puppy anymore. I got a freaking black bear. Okay? I got a great big fat black bear. And she's pouting now because she took after the goat and the goat didn't like it and the goat <laughs> drove her in the end of the beak a few times. So now she's pouting. But that's how we learn in life, right? You gotta let them smash their face in the brick wall a few times until they clue in and quit doing it. So hopefully she's got, um, hopefully the goat's got her respect and she won't kill the goat in a week when she gains another 50 frickin' pounds. <laughs> All right, go play nice. Goofy buggers. And then of course, Willow's still in the shop looking at her, trying to antagonize her. So it's definitely a two-way street there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Coincidentally, randomly, listen to this. It wrote on my window. Questions for Owlman and the, quote, get it all out, end quote, big picture theory. All right, here we go. Excuse me. Hello, Steve, and of course, fellow Sojourners. Sojourners. Thank you, Steve, for starting this and for all you're doing for the community regarding this topic. I am definitely in agreement with your overall perspective concerning the world and that we the people must live out our future and not sit on our tails on the couch expecting someone else to fix our problems for us. I'm sorry this email is long, but hey, you asked for it because I somehow remember you stating numerous times to get it all out in one go. LOL. Note, you might want to take a, you might want to break this up in two parts if need be. 
And I, for one, am quite frustrated whenever there are cliffhangers regarding this topic. And I have tried to sufficiently punctuate paragraphs slash proofread the email to make it easier to read considering its length. So far, so smooth. Let's do this. I prefer to be called a seven sparrow. Sparrow meaning aya. Aya. I. A I. Y. A H. On the digital spectrum. For multiple reasons. Maybe one day I'll have the guts like you, but if you knew the level of, quote, taboo slash politically incorrect, end quote, things I talk about on my itty bitty little channel that has been heavily cuffed via the YouTube tyrants in multiple ways, which may be an odd compliment of sorts, you might actually understand, lol. This statement isn't meant to be a plug since I never say what my channel is. I never ask for likes, subs, or shares. It will not even show up on YouTube without direct links or verbatim video names anyway. But if you want to exclude the references, feel free to do so. Anyway, after I literally, literally had some time, I decided to type up my recent experiences with the savvy people and also the small handful of puzzle pieces I have to offer that will hopefully be helpful with some people. Note, I do indeed consider myself a least of these, a voice in the wind, perpetual student who asks the crazy questions. Nothing I say is intended to tear anyone or other perspectives down. We're all on a journey. I can tell you that never in my life did I think I would have the mindset that I do today. Me being quite the conspiracy theory guru in my own circles, there has not been any taboo topic I have not dove into with the overall good of goal of trying to piece together the big picture. This perspective may make me sound like an amateur or novice researcher, and many will likely consider me so. Still, this should not prevent me from trying to impact the universe in my own little way, as clearly the standard explanations for almost everything is very wrong. While it is indeed valuable to be an expert in one thing, still a very important av avenue indeed, it becomes meaningless if that individual ends up developing tunnel vision. No shit. In my mind, if one is standing too close to a painting, there is a high chance they will not be able to see the entire painting, which is still a critical aspect of figuring out what the truth of our reality is. In the conspiracy universe, it's almost as if the entire area of Bigfoot slash Sasquatch slash ape men is generally somewhat accepted to be true. I know this has been the case for myself, hence it is not really scrutinized beyond the trying to catch the million dollar evidence thing. So even for me, it was not until a few months ago I finally started giving the topic the attention it deserves. Though I do have to directly say that I do not and never and have never considered myself a Sasquatch researcher in any way whatsoever. Sasquatch Chronicles and other similar channels were a good place to start. Then eventually the entire concept was taken to another level when I came across Scott Carpenter's channel slash findings. And then subsequently I found your channel, which has taught me a lot. I spent hours and hours listening to the Sabe accounts, trying to get a better, all overall, better overall grasp on these creatures and a map of their range of behaviors. Definitely in the beginning, it was, it was really Scott Carpenter's research that opened my eyes on what to look for in the woods and how these people use the trees slash brush slash shadow slash lighting to their advantage when they're hiding. Once my eyes were opened, I decided to look around our property. Long story short, I realize that there are likely a handful of Sabe living on slash near our home. We live in heavily wooded valley, which with a pond slash small lake and a creek. There is a somewhat steep, heavily treed hill across the pond where there are also many fallen trees beyond the tree line. Later, I came to learn these are fences the Sabe have built to help flush deer where they want them to go. Not to mention definitely crude looking teepees Nearby, made up of still living yet very manipulated trees, essentially woven together. A near impossible feat for us regular humans or nature, or nature left, left alone. One day I was looking up this hill trying to look for the darker areas Scott Carpenter mentioned as being suspicious. To my surprise I saw what looked like a tan face with auburn long hair that slowly, smoothly ducked its head down as if it was caught off guard by my intentional looking around. Being used, being used to expect me to be going about my business with tunnel vision as usually, as usual, and likely expected me to do so yet again that day. It's likely they did not expect that I would actually look into the area with intention. 
Another day we went out to look around. There was an unmistakable pop sound of a thick branch being broken about 75 feet or so of where we were. Almost as if to say, hey, you're looking for me, aren't you? Another time before my eyes were open, my mind window, from my window, I swear I saw one running across the hill. It was a blur of reddish color that had me doing the double take. Did I just see that? Yes, I did. I know I did. What was that? From other Sasquatch accounts, the speed of the creatures have been described as streaks of lightning of the color of their hair when they run, and this was definitely the case here. These, among other little tidbits, were all I needed as the initial hints of evidence. The Sabe were around us, and I decided to experiment. Hearing the many accounts of the Sabe people being able to not only hear, hear sent thoughts, but also able to understand what people say, no matter the language, probably due to them living their, living their parallel societies near our people's groups for centuries, I decided to put the matter to the test, and the reality check on my own frame of mind was humbling to say the least. While walking around in the cool of the afternoon, I walked around speaking to it slash them, not loudly at all. In fact, I think I were, I think if I were talking to anyone else, they would have asked me to report, repeat what I said, especially with the sound of the small waterfall and creek muffling most areas sounds nearby. Not to mention I was somewhat breathless from my activity earlier. I spoke what came to my mind from my heart. So not replicated verbatim here, but I spoke along the lines of, quote, okay, I know you guys are here. They say our people and your people used to be friends. Our rulers have taught us many lies, and now many of our people think you are not real or are just animals, but I don't think so. It sounds like you are people, just as we are people, that you understand languages and thoughts. Some have even said your people can read and write. Now that would be pretty impressive to see. Some say that you have a deep understanding of the Creator as well and understand right from wrong. We are trying to follow slash worship the Creator too. And maybe one day our families can worship Him together. Oh, by the way, I'd appreciate it if y'all don't do the knocking on the house thing because I think that would really freak me out and I appreciate it if you don't scare me, end quote. As the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. Seek and you shall find. With my, with my naive little mind and going off of other people's encounters, this sounds so spaced apart by long periods of time, I assumed it would take months before any kind of response happened. Nope. The next week, I started to hear things outside my house that were definitely not the standard wildlife. I believe I may have experienced a bit of a mind speak as well, as one evening I heard what sounded like my significant other's voice. Sparrow! Sparrow! Open the window! I heard it a few times that opened the window and yelled back at him that I opened it. No answer. He was in the garage, separated from the house by, the good, by a good distance. When I asked him why he yelled at me to the open window, to open the window, he stated he never did. Now that left me confused. I know many have spoken that mind speak is usually in, their, in your own voice in your head. However, this incident was clearly a male voice that sounded almost exactly like his, except that it was maybe a bit breathier and it sounded like someone yelling through a whirlwind. Another small instance of mind speak was when we were walking through the trail in our valley property, which has very tall moss rock outcroppings that make up the mountains that carve out our valley. I heard what sounded like a female voice. Hey! I turned around and didn't see anything. Not that I actually knew what to, what to look for, as my research on the Sabe was in its infancy stages at this point. To note here also, after my eyes were opened by Scott Carpenter and thinking back of experiences that were somewhat out of place, I do distinctly remember feeling watched as I was sitting to pray on the bridge, which I brushed off based which I brushed off based off the comment, you always feel watched in the woods. But this instance was enough for me to look over and above my shoulder towards a big boulder near the bridge. That's probably where whatever it was hid behind. And also when I was gathering some building material up behind by the previous owners of the property on the west side of the pond, I oddly had a super random thought that an old man was watching me. And I looked up on the ledge by the trees 
and definitely didn't see it <clears throat> didn't see anything especially not knowing what to look for considering savvy was the last thing on my mind at the time thankfully not once since we moved here did i ever feel i was in danger or feel any dread finishing up the initial conversation i had with the savvy near the pond i did thank them for being kind to us and told them they will have to be patient with me as I don't exactly understand their ways. I have a hunch that the people near us are the good kind. While the many accounts of animals freaking out when the sabi are near them, this has never ever been the case for our pets and other animals. We have actually distinctly seen our cat run into their area and come running back with a still green pine needle stuck evenly underneath her fairly tight collar. Okay, now here's where it gets crazy. Buckle your seatbelts. And sorry about the goat and the dog. But the following incidences I will discuss below, I know the response was not just coincidental. As we've been living there for a while, with little to no incidences whatsoever, and if there were any odd things, they were, excuse me, never significant enough to really convince me at the time. Remember, I told them that if they could read slash write, that'd be pretty impressive to see. Well, one late night I was on the phone. I heard a massive thud right outside the kitchen window. The blinds were shut. So close, I thought the house was hit. I then heard the sound of small taps on the kitchen window, maybe three or four times, tap, 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 then nothing. I thought it was a little odd, but brushed it off as nothing. Or that maybe I'm hearing things. The human mind in denial is an incredible thing. The next morning, I looked out the window, blinds open now, while washing my hands, and I noticed what appeared to be two symbols written on the glass. And yes, it was on the outside, probably written using charcoal as my guess. I asked everyone if they remember these mar those markings on the window before, to which everyone said no. Then it hit me. Oh my God. The only explanation of the symbols were there, the only explanation the symbols were there was that it wrote on the window that night and it made sure it was where I looked out of the most as if it knows this, at just about my eye level. The heavy thud was likely a very heavy it jumping from the hill, again where you're in a valley, to the front of the kitchen window. The sound of the small taps was it writing on my window. How is this not a response to what I had said to them earlier as if to prove they can write? What Sabe, who has been silent for over a year, would randomly do that unless it heard what I had spoken? Keeping in mind what I spoke to the Sabe, Sabe, the second part of my encounters, after the window writing incident, I thanked it slash them for it and told them I'm trying to figure out what they wrote. Then I asked, are you alone? Is there just one of you? Do you have a family? into the silence. Notice the, notice the wavering I'm doing with, acknowledge, with acknowledging they are there and trying to deny it at the same time. Kind of sad. Well, a few days later, for a couple of nights, I heard what sounded like vocalizations and deep footsteps outside my bedroom. The deep vocalizations people have mentioned that has such a range of frequency, range it, range, sorry, sorry guys. The deep vocalizations people have mentioned that have that has such a range of frequency, range, it has a similar effect to how the sounds at rock concerts can actually cause your hair to move back. No punctuation in that big one, <laughs> okay? Yeah, that definitely ranged, yeah, that definitely rang true as the gruff sound definitely vibrated the comforter on top of me. No shit, that would be so bizarre to experience that. I thought I even heard one singing, probably near the pond. Again, the human mind in denial is an amazing thing. Then I brushed it off for the first couple of nights, thinking I was just filling my head with way too many sabe stories. The third night, I kid you not, it sounded like there was a party outside. It literally sounded like a lively hangout, lots of activity, lots of noise. Since I sleep with a fan in my room, these were muffled to a degree, but I know I heard them. And I again tried to rationalize them away. Ugh, I'm going crazy. I guess I have to pee, end quote. I think, and get up to use the restroom, which has a tiny frosted window on the wall. After I finished and almost about to walk out, I hear pitter-patter, pitter-patter. 
No, the other side of the bathroom wall is the outside. It sounded like an uneven stool rocking back and forth, or that's how my mind interpreted it to me. But you know what it was? A light patting of the wall with alternating hands from the outside. It was very likely a young one trying to get my attention. The pitter-patter was again very light, definitely not threatening, not banging at all. Oh my goodness, this sounds absolutely crazy, but I assure you it happened. At the time, like an absolute idiot, I looked at the wall I heard it from, as if I could, couldn't understand what just happened, and just went back to bed. Ha! Huh. How I reacted was actually ridiculous when you think back. Later on that night, I definitely heard what sounds like something extremely heavy jumping on the ground outside my bedroom, almost as if something super heavy was being dropped onto the dirt. Notice, they did respect my request, they didn't bang on the walls, minus the little one earlier, so the effort was made to get my attention a different way. I'm guessing by jumping who knows how high in the air and ground pounding. I kept ignoring the sounds. Finally, there was one pound louder than the rest, almost as if it was irritated I was not responding. After all, I did bring this upon myself, yet clearly I was afraid to see it slash them in reality. Who knows how many of them are out there? Three, five, ten? The thing that gets me the most is that in my circles, I am the guru of everything mysterious. I thrive on research and connecting the dots and fearlessly diving into topics others are afraid of. Yet I could not face my fear and open the blinds. F, I am so disappointed in myself. It's almost exactly like Beauty and the Beast where the girl desires an extraordinary life and usually I see it that way too. And here is the chance to confirm the fantasy aspect of this topic as being real, like I've always taken for granted to like I've always taken for granted to be, yet I buckled like a cheap suitcase. I mean it was as if they all came to meet me due to my speech to them, and at that time I did not realize that this is an incredible honor, according to Owl Man. If I remember correctly, he had stated that the savvy people showing themselves to you is a sign they trust you. And here they were. It sounded like a frickin' reunion of the entire extended family, possibly even the leader of the group present. They took time and effort to come and visit me, and I could not even acknowledge them. Steve, I could not even muster the courage to peek through the curtains, and I am beyond ashamed of my weakness. I let fear take over me, even though I do have faith in the Creator. Y-H-W-H, which at this stage of the game I pronounce as Yawa. Like some native tribes say, highly, re highly recommend research by Dr. Steve Pigeon on this, though note it's heavily linguistically oriented. And conceptually, I do believe that YHWH is the only one we should fear at all. Yet I still listen to the wrong spirit. If you can't tell, I'm quite frustrated. If you can't tell, I'm quite frustrated with myself at the moment. In my fear. Finally, the next day or two, when I heard them outside again, this is really starting to affect my sleep quality, I sent via directed thought, quote, I'm so sorry. I'm afraid to see you. I thought I'm ready, but I'm not. Please give me more time, end quote. I am still just so ashamed of my failure. The next day, I went out to try to explain my stupidity that I did mean that I said, I did mean what I said when I told them I want to be friends and worship the Creator together, which is probably what they came to do. I just did not expect them to act on what I said so quickly. I told them I am praying to overcome my fear. I told them that in the city and TPTB, they lie to us about the whole of their existence. So there's something about being told to believe and then seeing slash experiencing the polar opposite in reality creates an automatic fear response because people really are like sheep and they run from what they fear. I told them I'll let them know when I'm ready and that if they give me another chance, I will see them next time. And I need to follow through this time. When people talk about peeing their pants because of the fear of seeing one, knowing there was likely an entire crew of them outside to see me, their physical presence undeniable in the dark too, with potentially their giant red glowing eyes at night, I could just not face it. The woods have been quiet like before I knew of them. But in an odd way, I feel lonely about it. The reality of the weakness on my own psyche truly caught me off guard, and I know I truly have work to do. I do have some questions for Owlman. 
Do the Sabbath think I'm a liar now? Will they give me another chance? Will they meet me where I'm at and understand? When you give these creatures tobacco with sage, how do you give it to them? I plan to do it right next time. I am mentally slash spiritually slash physically preparing for the official meeting. And I also plan to have some tobacco leaves with me to give them when I see them. I don't understand the deep significance of the tobacco, just that the savvy understand it. Well, I do have some distant Cherokee ancestry, as well as heavier native Japanese ancestry of 13 generations, which is actually claimed to be the true historical origin of the samurai with a family name that means 50 storms to boot. Just stating because it's pretty cool, but this is not, not to boast at all. At all, as despite this fancy name, I clearly do not even come close to living up to it. Bracket. I do wonder if the native lineage, i.e. first world slash old world, somehow encourages, for some odd reason, some kind of connection to these creatures. As for the life of me, I did not expect so many to come visit me for a first contact, or I would have kept my stupid mouth shut for a while. Perhaps it's just wishful thinking. But interestingly... After my heartfelt apology to them by the pond, every now and then when I'm praying in my chair by the fireplace, I sometimes get an undeniable smell of tobacco, which is strange as this definitely did not happen before. None of us have ever smoked and none of the furniture come from that environment either. I want to think that it's their way of acknowledging my apology or something, but who knows? Three months later, update. I'm inserting here. I recently tried to tell them I think I feel more up to the task now. They have left me a fancy stick sign. There's no way it was random how it was crafted and laid out in the middle of my usual path, which was gone the next day. I've heard some activity, but, I'm, but I am but I am certain they have not tried to come meet me as my family, as a family like that time passed. Maybe the particular family that heard me that day is not around here due to deer migration. Maybe they do different things in different seasons. Maybe my failure to guard myself from fear has left me somewhat crippled from the injury, hence I am struggling to fly in the frequency I was flying up until that point. I have left the tobacco and sage on a tree stump. I believe they, have, they, they had created. But for the most part, they appear untouched. Ugh, if I could go back in time, I would. Any advice from Owlman I would deeply appreciate. From what I can tell, when I ask for them for something directly, they don't seem to respond. It seems as if it's when I am not exactly looking to get a response, something seems to happen. Anyway, that about sums up my experience so far. I don't plan to wallow in negativity. I do plan to rise up from this and become better. And I do pray that I will truly be able to relevantly bridge into the savvy people in the near future. Chances are, by the time you read this, I will hopefully be experiencing the next chapter of interactions with the Sabe. Okay. <clears throat> now, this goes on into almost the exact same amount um, of email. <laughs> it's getting long, and I got some stuff I got to do, you guys. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, mark this whole email, retitle it. Part two, halfway down. All right, that was a long, and it's doubling up into double long. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the rest of that maybe tomorrow, and uh, and get more voices heard. All right, you guys. I don't know how long I've been sitting here, but it's been a while, and I got some stuff. I got to get that meat sorted out in those freezers, and I got to get warmed up again because it's freaking cold. I'll see if I got a short one to. Look, I got a short one right here I'll add on for the closing, but in the meantime, to the person who just emailed us, that's quite the detailed account of what's been going on in your life. There's a lot of typing, a lot of your time donated to the people through me, and we appreciate it. And um, keep us updated on whatever it is you discover in your journey. If you want to share it, and share it, all right? Because I'm sure you have a lot of people's attention. I'll guarantee you, you got the yellow man's attention, and he's going to be chiming in and offering up some answers to your questions, which he has done consistently in the past when people want to pass on questions to him. All right. So we'll see you guys come up with. But it's a lot. It's a lot for people who are just trying to figure out what the hell is screaming in the back 40 to hearing emails like this. Right. It's a lot for a lot of people to wrap their freaking melons around. Now, 
I gotta take care of this meat. I'll be back shortly. And just so you guys know, you know, I, I, I am, I will not stop getting the voices heard, but just so you do know, I am working behind the scenes to get a pile of information together and put it together so that it's easier for you to digest. And that's what I am doing on the side besides doing this, just so you know, okay? I'll be back shortly. Thanks everybody for writing in. I really appreciate it. And if I don't hear, or if I don't get another video out, make sure that everybody has a great Christmas, okay? Have a great Christmas and try to talk about happier topics more than you talk about the dark ones when you guys are in your family groups, all right? It really makes a difference. Talk to you later. <laughs> now what are you gonna do? Yeah. Game on. Puppy against goat. Ouch, right in the snout. Oh, another one. It's two jabs. Three jabs. Who's going for the takedown? Putting the run at Willow. Willow's playing dirty. Three jabs! She's had enough of that, maybe. Nope, maybe not. Going for number four? She learned her lesson yet. Yeah, she's had enough of those straight jabs. Ow! <laughs>